So uh, last time uh, we talked about the spirit of Python. So we've learned in the Bible what Python is and we've learned in the book of Acts of an encounter that Paul had uh, with uh, a, a girl that uh, was under a spirit of witchcraft. So today we're going to learn about Jezebel's spirits. We're going to learn in the Bible. It's not an extensive course. This is not a course uh, on, on uh, demonology, but I would like to give you some teaching on this spirit because we want to expose the works of the enemy in order to know how to battle against the powers of darkness. Uh, many times churches are in ignorance on how to pray and how to address these spirits. So last time we've seen that the spirit of Python chokes finances chokes people and now we're going to talk about this spirit the spirit of Je Jezebel which is associated with witchcraft and uh, witchcraft goes back to the Babylonian and um, Assyrian cultures so uh, primitive cultures they still uh, work under witchcraft and all of us came from uh, uh, different uh, backgrounds and different tribes and so witchcraft it's not an, an exclusive of any particular um, group uh, there's a, a lot of witchcraft in first nations as there's witchcraft in france as there are witchcraft in england as there is witchcraft in africa i've traveled all over the world so every culture has witchcraft sometimes it's even blended with christianity and uh, we know that the Roman Catholic Church, they were experts in blend, you know, the cultures with the saints of the church. And this is why uh, uh, it mixed, it's a blend of Christianity with different uh, cultures. So what, what the Roman Catholic Church did was to give a name of a saint to a particular demon. And so they assimilated uh, all of those uh, with uh, what they called Christian names. So this was done in the past, was very successful, praise God for what was achieved, I'm not criticizing. But today, in the 21st century, we need to get back to scripture, identify, uh, you know, the things that the devil is doing to blind people from seeing the glory of God. And we can call it different names. There's white magic, black magic, there's all kinds of, of uh, witchcraft in all cultures. Now, in, in, the, in the book of 2 Kings, on chapter 9, verse 22, says that, that there could be no peace as long as the idolatry and witchcraft of a particular woman was pra practiced. And uh, witchcraft is the util utilization of evil spirits to dominate, control, influence, manipulate people, sometimes uh, uh, governments, objects, and people use all sorts of spells, curses, divination, and control. So this is what witchcraft is. And the spirit of Jezebel, which was identified in the Old Testament, was also spotted by the Lord in the church of the New Testament. And so we need to be aware of this. There's a, a type of demonic influence, and we address it by the spirit of Jezebel. There's an excellent book, if you want to, uh, to understand how this spirit operates. I wish I had read this book when I was a young pastor. And it's called Unmasking the Spirit of Jezebel by John Paul Jackson. I really recommend this book. It's, it's a treaty on, on the action of this spirit, which is a very strong spirit in operation in our world and in many churches. It's not by chance that the Lord specifically mentioned this spirit in the book of Revelation. So it's, it's unmasking Jezebel. Now, um, in the Bible, there was a very powerful and wicked uh, uh, woman, and she was married with King uh, Ahab, and uh, her name was Jezebel. That's why we named this spirit as the spirit of, of Jezebel. And we know that witches deny Christian uh, faith, and... Um, this Jezebel uh, was a false prophetess and she established a religion of worshipping a god named Baal with two A's, Baal. And Baal was a god of prosperity, god of harvest, fertility and, and sex. 
and this is so similar to what people do in our days. They have all sorts of, of gods. Even to today, uh, any newscast, when something uh, bad happens, they blame Mother Nature, like if it was an entity. And, and the source of this, it's, it's also rooted in witchcraft. And we need to unmask it. Now, Jezebel was a witch. And this spirit is in operation in the world today. And it's in operation in many churches. And we need to uh, pinpoint this spirit, cast him out, to be sure that when we, we are in God's house, we have full freedom to the Holy Spirit and we don't allow any spirit in, of witchcraft in operation. And Jezebel in the book of Kings was killed by Jehu. Uh, and, um, and it takes a Jehu uh, 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 to kill Jezebel. And, and uh, this Jezebel was also killed by Enoch. Uh, a man that were uh, in the in the in the palace uh, with the role of taking care of the women of the palace. So and these were the ones that were used to to kill Jezebel. Now the spirit of Jezebel, it's a socio sociopathic spirit, and I like to tell you some of the symptoms so we'll be able to identify this spirit. Now Jezebel. The, uh, the spirit gains power by destroying others. So it's those people, they don't care about destroying someone else in order to be uh, in a position of influence. They're controlling, they're bossy. So it's, it's people that want to boss everybody around. They're extremely critical of others. They're vicious to the point of being bloodthirsty. So, so this, this is a terrible, terrible spirit. People under this influence, they're never wrong. When you try to, uh, to, to tell to a person under the spirit of Jezebel that maybe they could do things in a different way, they'll be extremely upset with you. Um, also, they will recruit others in their charges against their victims. The people under the spirit of Jezebel, they're very narcissistic. They love themselves. And, and they, they have such a high image of themselves. It, it's, it's, it's terrible. Jezebel's spirits, they lie and they believe their own lie. So they will tell a lie so many times that th then they're convinced of these lies. Uh, and other symptoms, it's people that have a complete lack of remorse after hurting someone. And I've seen this over and over even in churches. People will, will use words to say that they're sorry, but their actions don't, don't show that they're sorry. So, uh, also Jezebel will justify the harm made to others with affirmations of the kind of God told me. Oh, God told me this and God told me that. It, it's usually easy to pinpoint this spirit. And there's a visible symptom which is uh, people are very um, uh, um, uh, aggressive, they're irritated with others and, and they're quick tempered. So they, they boil uh, in, the, in the little water. Uh, and also, Jezebel claims to, to have religious uh, sentiments, but it's very superficial in devotion. So it's usually people that seem to be very spiritual, but they, they really don't pray. Or they pray two minutes or three minutes. And whenever we try to pray a, a, you know, a, a longer time with people under this spirit, they will excuse themselves because there's little devotion. And people under this spirit will falsely accuse you and they do not forgive you. It's the, it's, it, this spirit, it's, it's associated with unforgiveness. So a person under the spirit of Jezebel will not forgive others. And, and they, will, they, will, they will even tell you, I will not forgive you. And these are Christians. And we'll see people like this also in churches. Now, if you do not cut ties with people under this spirit, they will worry you to death and will destroy your peace. And Jezebel needs to learn the meaning of the word no. Okay, it's very important uh, that when we, we spot this spirit, people in spiritual authority need to be able to say no. And, and this really angers the spirit of Jezebel. But when we unmask and destroy this spirit, we'll see immediate results in our personal life, 
in the life of a church. Many times we don't understand why the kind of the blessing is choked. We're not seeing growth. We're not seeing people coming to Christ in a, in a region. So we need to unmask and understand that our fight, it's not against people. It's against spirits. But people can become influenced by these spirits. And this is one of the strongest strongholds that is attacking the church in the 21st century. And we need to identify. There's four nest spirits under Jezebel. You know, all, all these uh, principalities, it, they have a strong man, which is the head. And then there's a hierarchy of spirits or families or nests. And the spirits under Jezebel, there are, there are four downward steps of ruling spirits, which, which are deception, pride, rebellion, and perversion. So these are nests or uh, families of spirits that are under Jezebel. Now, when we want to bring Jezebel down in the region, they can be in government. You know, this spirit is in operation in politics. It's in operation in, in political organizations. It's a spirit that wants to be in power. It's not necessarily just uh, in operation in a church. No, not really. You will spot this spirit in your workplace, in associations, in organizations. And they will try to take control. They try to take control of regions. They try to take control, you, you know, of, of reserves. They'll try to take control of any area when, uh, when we have uh, people getting together in government, they will infiltrate. And there's deception, it's a, a spirit of pride, very rebellious and very perverted. Now, let's go now to the, uh, as I told you, I don't want to do a deep study in Jezebel, but I want to identify together with you uh, the action of this spirit, so we'll unmask it. And if it's in operation, uh, either in, in your workplace, in the asso an association that you attend, or in your home, sometimes this spirit rules uh, also in, in people's uh, homes, or if there's someone that tries to infiltrate even here in the church, we need to uh, really understand that we're not fighting against people, but we need to pull these spirits down. Now in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 20, these are the words of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and he was telling this to a church. He said, Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate uh, that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess. By her teaching, she misled my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sac sacrificed to idols. So here's a, a, a writing sent to a church by the Lord, and these are the, the seven letters to the seven churches that were in Asia, and those, those churches really existed, so they were real churches, but those are prophetic words also for all churches in all seasons, including us. And we see here the action of this spirit. Now, the spirit of Jezebel doesn't operate just in women. Okay, just because it has the name of a, of a woman, this is not specific to women. Many men are under this spirit of, of Jezebel. And look at what this, what this, this woman does. Uh, she calls herself a prophetess. So uh, sometimes people call themselves prophets. That's why, uh, uh, you know, when, you, when I personally try to introduce myself, I prefer that people recognize the gift in me rather than I saying, you know, I'm an apostle or I'm a prophet or I'm this or I'm that. But this spirit, people will come and they will say, oh, I'm a, a prophetess or I'm a prophet. Oh, I have this gift. And they will try to uh, manipulate things and to influence people in churches by, uh, seeming, uh, by trying to seem spiritual. Okay, so uh, in the book of Revelation, we might ask, what, Jezebel, didn't she die back in 2 Kings? Wasn't she killed? How can now Jezebel be threatening a church in Asia? And obviously, this is not the same person. This person, Jezebel, here in Revelation, is not the same Jezebel of the Old uh, uh, Testament, but this is a spirit. And the, the reference, the, there's a prophetic parallel. You know, as, just as John the Baptist uh, has a parallel with Elijah, 
uh, with the prophet because he came in the spirit of the power of Elijah. This person of influence in this church in uh, uh, Thyatira, which was the name of the place, was under demonic influences and control. Uh, that uh, and that control was named by uh, Jezebel. So this is why today we name this type of spirit with the name Jezebel. So we we can name different spirits. Uh, you know, Python, it's, it's an obvious spirit in the Bible because in the book of Acts it says that that girl was under the spirit of Python. Other spirits are not as easy to identify, but we have, for instance, the spirit of Absalom and the spirit of Joab and some spirits that are similar to, uh, uh, the, uh, they, they do things similar to the actions of uh, people from the Old Testament or the New Testament. The, the spirit of Judas, a spirit of betrayal. So today we're identifying Jezebel. And in the book of Revelation, we, we see that um, uh, the spirit obviously existed long before even Queen Jezebel uh, came into existence in the book of Romans. Now in scripture, Herodias, which was the daughter of Herod, uh, is a, a type of Jezebel. You know, just like Jezel, Jezebel opposed Elijah, the daughter of King Herod opposed John the Baptist. And you, you know what happened? She asked for the head of John, John the Baptist to be served on a, on a plate. And, um, and uh, so an example of this spirit is seen here in the book of Revelation. Now, the question is, how can we defeat this spirit? How to defeat Jezebel? Because we see the spirit exists, it's in operation today, so we need to uh, uh, see how this, how this woman was defeated in the first place in the Old Testament. Now, uh, we cannot cast out lust if we have lust in our lives. We need to repent. Okay? So I, I've, I've listened once to a, a Brazilian evangelist, and this, this was quite funny. And, and uh, uh, he uh, said that he had a calling to rebuke the spirit of fatness. <laughs> this is true. And he will, he will bring a scale to the church. He will rebuke the spirit of fatness, leave the scale with the pastor, and say, now start uh, weighing down the people, and you see that the spirit left by the scale. This was really ridiculous. But some people, they, they want to cast out conditions and conditions cannot be cast out we cannot bring down a spirit of control uh, if we use manipulation ourselves okay so we need to be submitted to the Lord and we must examine our own ways and we should repent if in our life there is something that has to do with manipulation so in order to cast Jezebel out Demons cannot cast demons. <clears throat> Jesus said that Satan cannot cast out Satan. Mm -hmm. This when they were accusing him of being demon possessed because Jesus was falsely accused of being demon possessed by priests. That, and, and he answered, Satan cannot cast out Satan. So a person that is under uh, the influence of this spirit, many times they will, they will claim to have prophetic gifts, but there's no result, there's no result of their uh, action. By other words, they can even be preachers, come and, and uh, preach in the church, they can be in positions of influence in the church, but there's little fruit to what they do. There's a lot of talk, but not uh, a, a lot of uh, fruit. So we need to talk the talk, but walk the walk. Okay, so we, we, we should have fruit of, of, of what we say. It's not about words. Now, second, to defeat Jezebel, first, we need to get rid of Jezebel ourselves. And uh, what I do in my prayer, in my personal prayer, I ask the Lord to cleanse me with His blood, with the blood of Jesus. So it's very important, as I, as I brush my teeth every day, I rebuke every kind of demon that may attack my life and my family. So I, I cover my life and I cover my family with the blood of Jesus every single day. And we should do the same. 
So uh, in our prayer, it, there's nothing wrong in saying, Lord, if there's any influence of Jezebel in my life, take it out, Lord. I don't want to have anything from Satan in me. I don't want to have any demonic influence in my personal life. Are you following me? Amen. All right. Uh, if you don't want to say amen, just think it. Okay? <laughs> Second, it takes uh, Jehu. So, uh, although Elijah was so powerful, Elijah was hiding from Jezebel. If you read in the book of Kings, you know, he defeated the, 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 the false prophecy of the prophets of Baal. He killed all those prophets, and there were hundreds of them. He killed them personally, but uh, after as Jezebel threatened him, he went on hiding. He was hiding from Jezebel. And he took Jehu uh, to trample Jezebel. Now, Jehu took no prisoners and showed no mercy to Jezebel. He had singleness of purpose. And as he approached Jezreel, uh, who saw his chariots, he, it says that he uh, drives, he drove furiously against them. This is in 2 Kings uh, chapter 9 and verse 20. And then on verse 22, it says, When others offered peace and compromise, Jehu responded, How can there be peace as long as the harlotries and witchcrafts of Jezebel are many? So he, he had no mercy, no mercy uh, uh, towards Jezebel. And, uh, you know, I can tell in my personal life, you know, I, I, I've, I've been pastoring congregations, and as we pastor, we tend to be very merciful. You know, as, as, as years go by, uh, as I'm pastoring congregations, sometimes I see things happening and I'm very merciful. And I've paid a high price for that. Because when we identify an evil spirit in operation, first we need to say no, and... We, we cannot show mercy when this, there's an operation of, of witchcraft or an attack in God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason why sometimes as churches we are in trouble, in deep trouble, it's because we have a tendency to forgive. Because we think, oh, God forgave me. Uh, let, let us forgive this brother or this sister. You know, let's try to restore this person. But there are situations in which we, we need to, uh, to understand it takes a, a Jehu. You know, uh, Elijah was merciful. He was a prophet. And he was willing to show mercy. But not this man. So sometimes we need someone that is not in the same spiritual level of an Elijah. But someone bold enough to say enough is enough. You know, pack your stuff and go. Pack your stuff and go. And this sometimes is so hard to do. You know, what the devil likes to do when we're in the context of a, of a, a smaller church is, when we're in the big church, we have all sorts of things happening. We have the operation of the Holy Spirit. We have a lot of demonic operation. But when churches are really big, you know, it, it's easier to manage. Because, you know, it's easier to tell to someone, okay, you, you're not going to do ministry here. The trap of Satan is more manifested in the context of a smaller church in which we don't want to lose people. But let me tell you, sometimes it's for the advan advantage of the kingdom to tell people, you know, it it's better that you, you try to do your stuff somewhere else. You know, this is God's house. You have no control or influence here. No, I tell you, no, you cannot do this. And sometimes it's not that our fight is against people, but when we have someone under the spirit of Jezebel, and that person doesn't want to be restored, changed, delivered, then we need to take action if we want to see God's kingdom to be established. Just think about it. I don't know, um, you know what's going on here in this church, but I know this message is it's, it's for this church. Now, how to defeat Jezebel? Jehu will not rest until Jezebel was dead. Her pleasures could not attract him. He wouldn't tolerate Jezebel. You know, we need to have a level of holiness in our life in which we do not tolerate sin. That's right. You know, Paul said you need to, uh, you need to, 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 even to hate the clothes, the garments stained with sin. That's right. 
hate garments. Well, I, I, I must tell you, sometimes I, I hate stuff that I buy. <laughs> Especially when I, when I dress it, and I don't know, it was the washing machine that uh, caused the, the, the garments to be small, or if I gained some weight, well. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, I just keep that shirt in the hope that one day I'll be able to dress it. <laughs> but sometimes I say, no, 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 so I give it away. And, uh, and suddenly I don't like that shirt anymore, and no, I hate it, because <laughs> I cannot dress it. You know, the Lord cannot dress garments that are stained with sin, That's right. and He doesn't want us to dress them. Jesus says we cannot tolerate Jezebel. In Revelation 2.20, He said, you know, you're doing so much good. He's talking, talking to a church. It's amazing. You know, the work you're doing, it's amazing. Though, I have this against you. You tolerate Jezebel. It's not that you put Jezebel in a pedestal. No, it's that you tolerate Jezebel. So, we shouldn't tolerate. We cannot give ground to this spirit. Alright, so let's move further. Now, when Jezebel attempted to captivate Jehu, he did not even allow himself to be drawn into a conversation with her. So instead, he called the eunuchs to cast her down from her balcony. And the eunuchs ended up uh, killing Jezebel. And, um, and to stop the spirit of Jezebel, sometimes we need some help. We cannot sometimes do it ourselves. Remember, Jezebel is a very seductive spirit. And, and she was probably a very beautiful woman. And she was trying to seduce this man. So he said, no, nope, you're not coming close to me. So he called the servants and he told, go and you know, throw her from the balcony over there. And, and so the spirit of Jezebel can be opposed in prayer, but there are specific actions sometimes that we need to do. To talk about the spirit of Jezebel, it's one thing. But there's practical ways in order to cast down this spirit. And we cannot stop the spirit of Jezebel without the gift of discernment of spirits. Right. So we need to have this gift in operation. Why does the church have to be built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets? Because there's, there's a work that only apostles and prophets can do. You know, a, a, a pastor will tolerate Jezebel. A prophet, no. <laughs> You know, uh, so, so, so it, we have different giftings in the body of Christ. And all gifts work for the good of the body, for the empowerment of the Christians. And so we need to have these gifts in operation. So I'm talking here about this spirit, but it's not enough to talk about it. We need to pull this spirit down. Right. And sometimes uh, it, it, it passes by, you know, uh, telling someone, listen, you cannot continue to cause disruption in our services. You cannot continue to attack leadership in our church. You cannot continue to do these things. And sometimes it's so hard. You know, some of you know that uh, we're, uh, we're opening a, a, a new church and that uh, pastors Aurel and Wendy, they're part of the ministry. And when we start the church, we want everybody to come. We want more people to come. And we want more people to come. And just last month, I, I, I had to excuse uh, two couples and tell, and, and tell them clearly, this is not a place for you. Because I spotted the action of this spirit. And when we spot the first thing, we say, it's no, you don't do this. And then we observe. Because we, if all the symptoms fall into place, then we need to go to an extreme. And when we have a small church, we, we often think, well, let's be merciful. You know, we've lost people, or we're not that big. We're not going to lose this couple, or that person, or that brother, or that sister. But if, if, if persistently there's a, a, a try, uh, uh, you know, to bring disruption to God's kingdom, we really need to have a prophetic intervention. You know how the, the Americans had all those uh, operations, you know, Desert Storm and Snowflake and all, you know, they give all these fancy names to operations. So I'm declaring now Operation Cleanup. <laughs> and, and we need to do some, some house cleanup. Now, uh, we're going to now to learn some prayers and confessions like we did last, last week. As I told you, this is not 
a deep study in Jezebel, but I would like to, to guide you into some confessions that will help you personally and the congregation to be free from the spirit of Jezebel, okay? So I'm going to, to ask you to, uh, to read this with me. You can repeat after me or, or I'll go uh, little by little. I'll go sentence by sentence. How we don't, uh, we're going to do, let, let's do it like this. I'll, I'm going to read and you repeat after me, okay? And you have the slide there to help you. So we're going to do this first confession to be delivered of the spirit of Jezebel. So you might say, I don't have this spirit. Well, you might say this, but you don't know. So this is the prayer that we're going to do in humbleness, asking the Lord to deliver all of us from this spirit. Are you ready to do this confession? Okay, so repeat after me. In the name of Jesus, I confess a sin, everything that I have done to manipulate, dominate, and control other people. I hate and renounce the full Jezebelic spirits and claim deliverance from them in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus died on the cross for my sins and became a curse for me. I declare every curse having to do with Jezebelic spirits to be broken from whatever source, even back to 15 generations, in both sides of my family. I also ask Father that you sever any ties of bondage which may exist between me and those who have practiced witchcraft and sorcery against me. Thank you, Jesus, for, dry, for dying for my sins, for your glorious resurrection, and for making me a new creature in Christ by faith in your precious blood. How does that feel? Feels good? So let's continue. Just say, Dear Lord, I have a confession to make through ignorance, stupidity, and willfulness. I have sought super supernatural experiences apart from you. I have disobeyed your words. And I ask you to help me as I renounce all these things. Cleanse me my body, soul, and spirit, I pray. Amen? Now I'm going to ask you to stand. And we're going to do a confession of authority. We're not praying to God now. Now we're going to rebuke Satan, okay? You may remain seated, but if you can stand, if you feel comfortable, just, just, just uh, do this confession. So we're now going to do a prayer of renunciation of the occult. Okay, so uh, just, just repeat after me. I am closing the door, which I may have opened, to you, to you, through contact with your cult. Contact with your cult. Satan, Satan, I renounce all contact with witchcraft, witchcraft magic, magic, Ouija boards, boards and any occult game. Any I renounce all kinds of fortune telling, palm reading, reading, tea leaf readings, reading, crystal balls, crystal balls tarot, 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 cards, and other occult or witchcraft card games. I renounce all astrology, birth signs, and horoscopes. I renounce all heresy of reincarnation in all healing groups involving metaphysics and spiritualism. I renounce all hypnosis under any excuse or authority. In the name of Jesus, I renounce all psychic heredity that I may have and break all demonic holds on me back 15 generations in both sides of my family. I do now renounce and forsake every, every, every psychic and occult contact that I know about 
and those which I don't know about. I renounce every cult that denies the blood of Jesus Christ and every philosophy which denies the deity of Christ. Amen? How does that feel? Okay? Can you just breathe like... Just say thank you, Jesus. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. Okay, just lift up your hands. You know, as, as we do these prayers, you can lower your hands. As we do these prayers, you, if you yawn or if you burp or something, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it, you, you just, it's just yawning because you're tired. Sometimes you may be yawning because something is coming out of you. Okay? Don't worry. Don't worry. All right. So can you sit down now? Now we're going to do uh, just a prayer, a sinner's prayer, a coming to Jesus prayer. All right? I just want to help you with, with these things. Just say with me, I come to you, Jesus, as my deliverer. You know all of my problems. All the things that bind, that torment, that defile and harass me. I now lose myself from every dark spirit, from every evil influence, from every satanic bondage, and every spirit in me that is not the Spirit of God. And I command all such spirits to leave me now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Is that a good prayer? Okay. Would you like to have a little booklet with these prayers? Yeah. Okay, so, so next time I come here, I, 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 I'm going to print a little book with these prayers. All right? So let, let's do the last confession. Okay? So just repeat after me. I now confess, I now confess that, through Jesus, that through the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed, I am redeemed out of the hand of the devil, of the of the devil and my body, and my body is, a is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Redeemed, redeemed cleansed, cleansed, sanctified, by the blood of Jesus, and Satan has no power or place over me. Let's give a hand of applause to the Lord. Praise God. Amen. See, these prayers are very important because Jezebel may want to uh, take control of one's life, always with the purpose of destroying you and destroying God's kingdom. Okay. So now uh, I'm not going to read the prayer, but I would like to do a prayer for the congregation, mm -hmm. specifically for the leaders, for the spiritual leaders of this church. And I want to do this prayer that God will give you grace to identify the attack of this spirit of Jezebel, because Jezebel is constantly trying to infiltrate churches. Amen. Constantly. Amen. That's a constant. That, that's something that doesn't stop. And I'm going to ask God to give you grace to have the discernment of spirits and the first thing you need to say when someone comes and tries to say you know what you know the Lord told me uh, you need to do like this or like that first thing you say is no okay that's the first thing you need to do when you identify it's the spirit of Jezebel you don't agree with with, the, with that spirit never never you say no you say no you know, I had an, an instance just re recently of someone trying to tell me that uh, uh, very well-known men of God that are, you know, known in the Christian world, that they're not really men of God, that they're, uh, they're evil people in disguise. And I had to say, no, I don't accept that. I don't accept that. I don't accept that. And though I love those people, I had to say, no, no, no. And finally say, you know, it's time for you to move on. Because we're here to bring glory to the Lord, not to attack right. men and women of God. Right. Okay? So you might not like, you know, Benny Hinn or Joyce Myers or uh, Rick Warren or all the, the you know, well-known men of God and women of God. But if you're not bringing people to Christ, you have no authority to talk against That's other right. people. You have That's no right. authority at all. You know, if you're a member of a congregation, you're not full-time in ministry, you're not bringing people to the Lord, and you criticize those that are doing it, you know, something's dead wrong with you. Right. You may not like Joel Austin or what he preaches, but he has the largest church in America. Right. So there's a reason why God is blessing 
some of these ministries. So, but the spirit of Jezebel will come and will try to tell you, oh, I don't like this person. Oh, I don't like that person. You know, I don't like that rabbi that comes here. You know what? I don't like that pastor that comes here. Okay, the, you're allowed not to like a person. Mm -hmm. But if you try to use that to manipulate right. leadership, something is, is really wrong. So right. I want to pray for this church that God will give grace and the prophetic voice that will be able to say no to, to Jezebel. And we need the Jehus, the people that, you know, hands on, get rid of, of this spirit. All right? Yeah. Can we do this? Yeah. So why don't we stand again? I know you're tired of being sitting down. Are you tired of being sitting down? <laughs> Praise God. Makes good, you know? Lift up, sit down. It's good for you. Keeps you awake. All right. So I'm going to do this prayer of warfare. And I'm going to ask all of you that uh, want to agree with this prayer, you know, just to say your amen, you know, pray in tongues, do whatever the Lord gives you, but let's pray for us specifically here as a church. You know, I'm not just a guest here. I, I feel like a part of you. Yeah. You know, that's what, ha what happens when we start coming right. often to a place we, we feel and we share the burden. And I have this burden when, I t when you tell me, we want to see the youth, we want to see more people coming to the Lord. You know, what's going on? You're not to blame, but we need to pull down the strongholds. And that's what we're going to do now, okay? Yeah. Hallelujah. So, Lord, right now I come against every Jezebelic spirit that has attacked this church, this congregation. And, Lord, I cover the congregation, the leaders, with the blood of Jesus Christ. And I, play, I pray, Lord, for, for spiritual discernment that will allow people to pinpoint the influence of Jezebel. And right now I pull down all Jezebelic spirits that try to bring division, strife, spirits of envy, spiritual uh, envy, uh, spiritual uh, and charismatic witchcraft, people that use the name of the Lord in order to manipulate others. I now pull down all those strongholds and spirits and declare this church free from the influence of Jezebel. And Jezebel, I tell you, uh, and any strong man that is trying to manipulate and take control of God's kingdom here in this reserve, I declare you have no more place to hide, we cast you down, we pull you down, and we destroy your influence over this church, over this reserve, over this region, and we declare a season of revival right now in the name of Jesus. Jezebel, you will not be able to, to manipulate and control people in the name of Jesus. We declare we're free from that influence, and this church is free from that influence in the name of Jesus. Amen.